Muslims, like Christians and Jews, consider themselves spiritual descendants of Abraham. 1.5 billion people in this world are Muslims. 250 million of them are Arabs, and over 1.2 billion are non-Arabs. There are Chinese Muslims, European Muslims, American Muslims, Latino Muslims. One out of every five people in this world is a Muslim, which is enough reason to learn about Islam. It is important to realize that Islam is not just a religion, but it is a complete, comprehensive way of life. It's not something that we only do on Fridays, but it carries over into our workplace, our families, our communities, and our friends. Linguistically, in the Arabic language, the word Islam comes from the root word Salama. And from this root, you can have three different words with three different meanings. The first one is submission, the second one is purity, and the third one is peace. Submission, purity, and peace. Surprisingly, the word Islam Islamically carries those three meanings. The word Islam Islamically means that if any person fully submits himself or herself to the will of God and worships God purely without any association with God, worships God alone, he or she should live in peace and harmony in this life and in the hereafter. So the word Muslim in the Arabic language doesn't mean literally a follower of Prophet Muhammad. The word Muslim literally means someone who submits to the will of God and worships God alone. Muslims feel they are in harmony with the universe because the Quran mentioned several times that everything around them is submitting to the law of God and worshiping Him, while they are also worshiping and submitting to God. Do you not see that Allah is the one who is praised by all those who are in the heavens and in the earth? The very birds praise Him as they wing their flight. Each one knows its prayers and how to praise him, and Allah has full knowledge of all their actions. The Quran stresses on the point of living in a worshiping universe, wherein every single being worships God in its own way, which may not be comprehended by man. The Quran says, The seven heavens the earth and all beings therein declare his glory. There is not a single thing that glorifies him with his praise, but you do not comprehend their hymns of his glory. These verses become very inspiring for me when I hear the birds twittering early morning or at sunset. I say, oh my God, can this be their two prescribed times of prayer? Or when I go to the lake and I see the duck swimming in a V shape like that, I say, can this be a congregation prayer that they do? And this duck in the front, can it be the Imam duck? I look at the creation like musicians in a concert. Each one is playing one instrument, but at the end, all of them are contributing to the same tune. The universe is in harmony. One of the really, really amazing things about Islam, and what caused me as a young man in North America to accept it as a way of life, is not only does Islam encourage us to accept the existence of our Creator, but also it pushes us to look into His creation at the variance in colors and languages and cultures and respect the power of this divine force through His creation. One of the most basic facts in Islam and most important beliefs is that there is a creator. And one of the ways of recognizing his existence and mightiness is by studying creation. The creator said to those who believe and those who do not believe in the Quran. In the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alternation of the night and the day, there are signs for people of understanding. 
After deep thinking, many ancient and modern philosophers reached the fact of the existence of a supreme being who created this universe and is maintaining it continuously. Aristotle, an ancient Greek philosopher and student of Plato, tried to demonstrate this fact, saying, We hold, then, that the God is a living being, eternal, most good, and therefore life and a continuous eternal existence belong to the God, for that is what the God is. If people look around them, they will see the intelligent design everywhere and in their own selves. Take the eye as an example. The light reflects on the object and then reflects on our eye retina where it is transferred into pulses to a place in the brain called the center of vision. And it is probably one of the darkest places in the human body because it is completely insulated from light. It never saw the light. And all the images that we view in our lives are formed in this part of the body, the center of vision. We see all these bright, sharp, three-dimensional images in this part of the body. While thousands and thousands of engineers in TV factories are trying to come up with an image as sharp, bright and clear, but still they cannot. And if someone claimed that TVs that we have at home just came by chance, atoms accumulated and made those TVs, no one will believe it. But still, some people believe that the vision system came by chance. Same applies for hearing, taste, the way kidneys work, the way livers work, etc., etc. The Creator said in the Qur'an, Were they created without a Creator? Or were they their own Creators? René Descartes, a noted French philosopher and one of the most influential thinkers of modern times, was led to belief in God through doubt. He doubted that there is God, but doubt meant to him that he thinks, which in turn meant that he exists, which therefore meant that he was created, and since he did not create himself, therefore someone else must have created him, and that one should be the source of life. Can I be the author of my being? Or can I conserve myself at the present time? If this would be the case, then the idea of a perfect substance would be caused by my own mind. In order for this to be, I should have to be God himself. As this, I am clearly not. Infinity is before finitude. Immanuel Kant, one of the most influential thinkers of modern times, who is regarded as the last major philosopher of the Age of Enlightenment, was impressed by all the variations, numerations, and synchronizations in this world that make the existence of an omnipotent supreme being a fact. This present world presents to us so immeasurable a stage of variety, order, fitness, and beauty. Whether we follow it up in the infinity of space or in its unlimited division, that even with the little knowledge which our poor understanding has been able to gather, all language, with regard to so many inconceivable wonders, loses its vigor, all the numbers their power of measuring, and all our thoughts their necessary determinations, so that our judgment of the whole is lost in a speechless, but all the more eloquent astonishment. And in another message which encourages